It is the end of an era at the Worldwide Leader and Woke. And that prestigious title, the name that was bestowed upon ESPN four years ago by yours truly, that prestigious title, it is one of the main reasons that it's the end of an era at ESPN. Over the last few months, and really throughout the entirety of 2024, ESPN has been noticeably quiet when it comes to politics. Well, KC, that's obvious. ESPN's a sports network. Why would they be discussing politics? Huh. <laughs> um, there's a reason I have been referring to ESPN as the worldwide leader in woke. Since the summer of 2020, ESPN has been the biggest customer at Wayne's World of Woke Wiener. During the lead up to the 2020 election, ESPN directed their on-air talent, or in some cases, their people on air with a complete lack of talent. ESPN directed their employees to create stories of mythical racism and share them with the audience. Grown men were literally crying on the air as they apologized for their white privilege. Remember Remember Kirk Herbstreet crying on college game day over... I don't remember what it was over. Hell, who even cares? I don't remember why he was crying. He doesn't remember either. He just saw that he was scripted to cry, so he borrowed some onions and made himself look like a complete doofus on national television. What about the time that super beta male Ryan Clark broke down in tears on ESPN? Crying Ryan, he was all emotional as he told a fabricated story of dealing with racism at Five Star Franks, where the cucumber is chilled and the wiener is grilled. During the lead up to the 2020 election and for several years afterwards, ESPN was the proud home of the woke fungus. But during the 2024 election cycle, ESPN seemed to be exercising their right to remain silent. Question is, why? Well, for starters, it's been reported throughout the year that ESPN president Jimmy Pataro told his woke welfare collectors to shut up and dribble. He told on-air talent at ESPN to stick to sports. Now, this was not the first time that the president of ESPN issued this directive. Did the same thing several years ago, but that directive... It only applied to normal people. If Malika Andrews or L. Duncan wanted to complain about Planned Parenthood, that was okay. If Sage Steele wanted to talk about rejecting her invitation to spend the weekend with Aunt Fauci, that was no bueno. So you could understand my initial skepticism when Jimmy Pataro told employees at ESPN to shut up and dribble again. But this time... This time, the policy was for everyone. This time, Jimmy Pataro meant exactly what he said. For the most part, everyone at ESPN seemed to follow orders, but there was one show who just couldn't seem to grasp this simple concept. There was one show who continued to spank the wanker. There was one show who refused to be vaccinated against the woke fungus. And maybe, just maybe, that played a role in ESPN's decision to put viewers out of their misery and finally pull the plug on Around the Horn. If you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at KC underscore BTL84. Last night, the New York Post reported that ESPN was canceling Around the Horn. Final episode will air this summer. I guess it's better late than never. To be honest with you, Around the Horn should have been canceled years ago. I know this might be hard for my younger viewers to believe, but there was a time when Around the Horn was considered to be legendary. When I was in high school and college, PTI Around the Horn, that was appointment television. Now, PTI is still a great show. Matter of fact, PTI is the most watched show at the network. But over the last few years, Around the Horn has went through a serious decline. A serious decline in both ratings and quality. I can't even refer to Around the Horn as a polished turd anymore. This show's gotten so bad, my dog Oreo, who for reasons unknown enjoys a freshly baked turd, Around the Horn has gotten so bad, Oreo won't even sniff this shit.
Now, the New York Post didn't provide an official reason as to why ESPN is canceling around the horn. If I had to guess... ESPN will probably say that the show ran its course, it's antiquated, the format is stale. They might come up with a litany of excuses to disguise the real reason that they're burying the show in the woke cemetery. But I would imagine that Around the Horn is being canceled because their ratings are in the pooper. And their ratings have been circling the drain for years now. When the show was in its prime, Around the Horn was easily pulling five, six hundred thousand viewers. Some episodes were eclipsing seven, eight hundred thousand. For a daytime show on cable, those are great numbers. But over the last three, four years, Around the Horn has been struggling to maintain three hundred thousand viewers. With a decline that steep, It's obvious why ESPN would cancel this dump, but the ratings are just the symptom to the overall problem. When you see a ratings decline like this, you gotta ask, why? Now, sometimes ratings will decline because a show's become stale or they can no longer compete. But the problem with Around the Horn, it is easy to diagnose because it's the exact same problem that they have in late night television. The biggest problem with Around the Horn and the reason the show is being canceled The host, the people on the show. As is always the case, you don't have to take my word for it. Uncle KC always comes with the proof. I put together a compilation of Around the Horn's greatest moments in the last three or four years. Watch it for yourself. I do believe that any person in privilege has a moral obligation to speak up against racism and homophobia and transphobia and all those things like I as a man and that place of privilege have to speak out against these things that impact women. Uh, Who are we to criticize China's human rights records when we have ongoing uh, attacks by the agents of the state against unarmed citizens and we've got assaults on the voting rights of, of our people of color in various states in this country. Pride is about inclusion. So you don't love them and you don't welcome them if you're not willing to wear the patch. And calling it a lifestyle reveals to me that you've done not even a modicum of research or understanding on this topic. It's what tends to happen when a privileged class isn't affected by things. This is not just about baseball. That religious exemption BS, which is used in sport and otherwise, also allows for people to be denied health care, jobs, apartments, children, prescriptions, all sorts of rights. And so we have to stop tiptoeing around it because we're trying to protect people who are trying to be bigoted from asking for them to be exempt from it when the very people that they are bigoted against are suffering the consequences. Is it any wonder, is it any wonder why people quit watching this show? When Around the Horn was in its prime, it featured panelists like Woody Page, Jay Mariotti, Tim Kalashaw, Jackie McMullen, even J.A. Adande before he transitioned to Captain Doofus. These people were actual journalists. Their job was to cover sports for a living. They were in locker rooms. They were covering teams in their respective markets. ESPN ran into a problem when they chose to focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion. So instead of having actual journalists on Around the Horn, ESPN started featuring people who were not qualified to be on the show. They started worrying about meeting their diversity quota instead of meeting the needs of their audience. Sarah Spain is not a journalist. Mina Kimes is not a journalist. Monica McDougal? Hell, I don't know what... Monica McDougal is, but I know what she's not, entertaining. That squeaky voiced nerd that you heard in that clip, that is David Dennis Jr. David Doofus, he was given a job at ESPN because his father was a civil rights activist. Those are the qualifications that ESPN started using when they were hiring people. Sarah Spain, She broke into the mainstream media by auctioning herself off as a date to the Super Bowl. The bidding started at $100, and by the end of the auction, the price was bid all the way down to zero. Mina Kimes was hired by ESPN because she wrote a heartfelt letter about bonding with her father over the Seattle Seahawks. Um, me and my dad bond over making jokes. 
jokes about my mom, jokes about my sister, jokes about my wife or my nephews. But that doesn't mean I'm qualified to be the next Chris Rock. Just because me and my dad make jokes doesn't make me a fucking comedian. The demise of ESPN. It can be traced back to when they started basing hiring decisions on race and gender instead of merit and qualifications. Around the Horn is one of the biggest casualties of ESPN's flawed process. The show became unwatchable because the people on the show, they were unqualified to be there. But like I said, the declining ratings on Around the Horn and even the cancellation of the show, that is just the symptom to a larger problem at the Worldwide Leader and Woke. You know what the real problem is at ESPN? The network no longer has the ability to create new stars. Think about it. Outside of Stephen A. Smith, who is the last star that ESPN created? Well, Casey, what about Molly Carum? She's a huge star! Molly Carum? Where is she considered to be a star? Who in the hell thinks Molly Karam is a star in sports media? Go watch First Take. It will not take you very long to figure out why Molly Karam is the worst part of the show. She's under this delusion that she's a star. She's under this delusion that people care what she thinks. For some reason, Molly seems to have forgotten that she is the host her job is to set up the stars. Her job is to set up Stephen A. Smith, Shannon Sharp. Hey, it's me, Shay Shay! Chris Russo, Rex Ryan, Sham Sharnia. Her job is to ask the questions. It's not her job to interrupt the actual stars to answer the question that she asked. Who is the last star that ESPN created? Most programming at ESPN is absolute trash. NFL coverage, vomit. NBA coverage, double vomit. NHL coverage, non-existent. WNBA coverage, dump. Why do you think ESPN has spent so much money acquiring outside talent? Just look at all the talent that ESPN has bought in the last couple of years. Joe Buck, Troy Aikman, when Stephen A. divorced Max Kellerman instead of ESPN promoting someone from within, they went out and hired a grown man who calls himself Shay and walks around with a purse. How many former NFL players, Hall of Famers, do you see walking around with a purse? ESPN is proud to have the only one. Why did they hire Shannon Sharp instead of promoting from within? Maybe it's because they didn't have anyone to promote. And they didn't have anyone to promote because ESPN hasn't created any new stars. And they haven't created new stars because they kept hiring people who weren't qualified to be there. It's the same reason they broke the bank for Pat McAfee. For years, ESPN has been trying to find a replacement for Stephen A. Smith because they know, like I have been predicting for years, ESPN is running on borrowed time with Stephen A. He wants to branch out, doesn't want to keep covering sports. They tried with Bamani Jones, failure. Dan Levitard, failure. Jamel Hill, failure. Tori Pablo, failure. Michael Smith, failure. Mina Kimes, Failure. Canceling around the horn, that is a step in the right direction. Attempting to eradicate the woke fungus, that is definitely the right move. Buying stars, that is a temporary solution to the problem. But the problem with buying stars, you don't have any leverage as a network. With stars you create, you've got leverage. You have a sense of loyalty, a sense of appreciation. Stephen A. Smith, he would not be where he is today without ESPN's platform. Pat McAfee, he doesn't need ESPN, which is why he can get away with saying things that would get Stephen A. Smith suspended. But anyway, give me your thoughts on this. ESPN cancels Around the Horn. By this time next year, Around the Horn will be a distant memory, or more than likely, 
it will be completely forgotten. What caused the decline of the show? Also, does ESPN have a serious problem with their inability to create new stars? Why can't they do it? Why can't ESPN elevate their talent? Let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Best way to contact me is through email, btlkc84 at gmail.com. I'll see you guys later.